Back in May, I received an offer to appear as a guest on Gavin McGinnis's new show. The offer was different from other interview requests for two reasons. First, it came from someone I have absolutely no respect for and would never want to be associated with. I'll explain why in just a minute. So let's start off by saying we know that Gavin's a guy who makes jokes, right? And that it's all been pretty, his whole career now has been pretty much taken out of context. He's disavowed the Proud Boys once they became something he uh, he didn't necessarily want to stand behind. But that's not what, even what he says. That's like other people's interpretations of it. He says it's because to help court cases so that if they're being identified as a gang, gang needs a leader most of the time. So he's told by lawyers that if he disassociates with them, it's better for the people involved. So it now comes up on Gavin's new platform, Free Speech TV, which I believe just is him, somebody else, and Milo Yiannopoulos, that they're trying to pay people to come on a show. Why? Because leftists, and I hate using the left and the right thing, but that's the reality here, because I don't really like labeling, but that's the reality here. He doesn't like labeling. He's part of the deep state. He wants the labels. Why don't you tell me what the labels are? I don't know, do you? That's a Jesse Ventura I'm working on. I was a Navy SEAL, Alex. Why don't you tell me who the deep state is? The deep state wasn't there before. <laughs> no one will go on his show where uh, Gavin's basically a bartender and they get a person from the left and a person from the right to discuss things. They did that with Milo and Cornell West, who's, I think he's mostly socialist. I've only seen a little bit of him. Seems like a nice guy, but he's uh, not somebody I particularly agree with. And now the Young Turks, are trying to mock Gavin McInnes for this, for trying to pay them to come on his show. Like, that's such a horrible thing. So now they're taking all these Gavin clips, a lot of which are actually jokes, including him holding a plastic sword in the air, yelling in Japanese, put to eerie music. It's so funny to watch them turn Gavin McInnes so funny and so sad to make him seem like such a scary guy. I can't imagine somebody doing that to me. I'm sure maybe somebody will one day. Heard a guy in the gym talking about me the other day, which is pretty funny. Um, he was saying, this is in the change room. I had my headphones on, but they weren't on. He said, I think that's a guy who, do, who, who rants on YouTube. And then as he walked by, I'm pretty sure I saw an Antifa uh, <laughs> tattoo on him. I think that's what it was. The three arrows in the circle. I think that's a, an Antifa thing. So maybe I'm getting more famous in the area for... For being part of the deep state. <laughs> He's part of the deep state. I don't know, do you? I was a Navy SEAL. I was the governor. Why can't I go in? What do you have to hide? Are you a patriot? Um, so the Young Turks, yeah, they're making fun of uh, Gavin McInnes with all these bad promos. And, and they're using a guy who's admittedly a comedy editor. They're such goons. The Young Turks are such goons. I have videos if you've seen them, about how they don't make any sense. They used to have the guy, Jimmy whatever, who spit on Alex Jones, tough guy. We know how triggered Chank gets. We know how they are called the Young Turks, which is a, after a group who committed genocide, and they denied this for years until they had to admit that uh, it was bad. Anna Kasparian fat-shaming Alex Jones. It's just people, Dave Rubin left them. It's just a whole whirlwind of goonery. And so they're talking about how Gavin wants to pay them. And it's all because he wants to change his image. He wants to pay them because he's desperate to get this oh so important young Turks on his show that he's willing to pay them. And then they talk about how he's reached out to other YouTubers, other dirty little rats. <laughs> so watch these guys try to make sad attempts as to why they won't go on. Second, he offered me $7,000 plus paid travel and accommodations to New York. I rejected the request. As much as I could use the money, and I could use the money, I'm way too savvy to help a despicable human being launder his image and reputation for promoting violence. We're wondering if Sam would accept our invite to be on the show. The show is a panel discussion that will have a conservative and a liberal on every show to discuss the current events in politics for about an hour. We can pay for Sam's travel and stay, plus pay him 
$1,000 to be on the show. Is that Gavin McInnes' program, I don't know where they get the money, but they are offering to pay guests to come on. Now, this is not typically done. We have never paid a guest. We've had, what, 1,500 interviews that I've done. We've had like two or three people ask for money. Uh, we've never paid. Now, we all know the real reasons, right, is, of course, because they will lose. No one will go on these other opposing shows. Nobody will go on opposing talk shows. Nobody will go on opposing podcasts. I feel like only some people will go on, like even Joe Rogan. They're too afraid to, to be proven wrong by him. Imagine Tucker Carlson was on Stephen Colbert or Jamie Kimmel. They won't do it because they'll wipe the floors with them. That's why Letterman was such a G. He had Bill O'Reilly all the time, and they seemed to hate each other, but at least he had them on. Who knows if they really hated them, each other. No one will debate Ben Shapiro. Cardi B talks all this shit on Twitter and everything. And as like a character, I like her. I think she's funny, especially when she talks about like taxes and stuff. Or when Candace Owens disagrees with her, or even Tommy Laren di disagrees with her. My wife, Tommy Laren, by the way. Bring her picture up. My wife. When she talks all the shit, but when they disagree with her and say, let's debate, she's like, um, no, I'm just trying to educate. Character gets quickly broken. But if all these people are so supposedly dumb and evil, shouldn't they be easy to defeat? Shouldn't it be easy to expose their evil, racist, uh, misogynist ways? That's what Anna Kasparian says about Gavin McInnes, that he dislikes people of color. Meanwhile, his guest was a black man. Proud Boys have tons of black guys. His producer's an Asian guy. It's it's all just a song and dance to just make an excuse not to go on a show because you'll get defeated. I'm not about to debate Ben Shapiro on like U.S. history because he'll defeat me. You pay me ten thousand dollars, or Gavin McInnes is offering seven thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. I'll take that money to lose a debate. <laughs> but I would lose it gracefully is the difference. It's so stupid that you can't just talk to people. Tucker Carlson has to pay people to come onto his show also. And he's always so thankful for anyone from the other side that comes on and talks to him, even if he finds them to be ridiculous. It's a really sad state of affairs, so I hope people don't fall for these things. I hope they start supporting alternate media that's willing to do these things. And I hope that people can see through it. I, I was talking about this with my friend yesterday. Who's sitting there and listening and just is, and taking these things as fact? I hope this these people don't exist. I hope you can see through it. This has been Andrew says. Where's the deep state? Why don't you tell me who it is? I don't know. I was in Vietnam.